It's that time of year when thoughts turn to spending time with loved ones and gift giving. Today I'm sharing my three favourite herbal gifts which, when gifted, are always most appreciated. They also have the benefit of being something you can do together with the family. You'll find the recipes on the projectjoyful.com website for you to bookmark and return to again and again. Let's get started, shall we? Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tutte, your medical herbalist and high performance coach. So, hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul sense of joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So hey, let's get started, shall we? It's getting to that time of year when thoughts turn to gift giving, food, hanging out with loved ones, and let's be honest, survival. So today I'm sharing three herbal recipes. Two of them are herb-infused brandy recipes. One with roses in for the southern hemisphere and one with hawthorns for the northern hemisphere. And I'm also sharing a herbal bath bag. I like to make a bunch of herbal bath bags with similar aromatherapy themes and put them in a gorgeous kiln or jar with a handwritten label. You could go for a calming and soothing theme and bring together combinations that include lavender, rose, neroli and chamomile. Go for no more than two essential oils in each bath bag. Or perhaps a cold and flu theme by combining eucalyptus, pine, manuka, lemon or tea tree. Or for our weekend warriors, try some muscle releasing blends like eucalyptus, rosemary, yarrow, lavender, chamomile or black pepper. Here's how you make a herbal bath bag. You'll need some muslin cut into squares and some twine to get started. So your herbal bath bag ingredients are rolled oats, bicarbonate of soda, your essential oil theme, herb seeds or petals such as lavender, chamomile or English marigold, And here's how you make your herbal bath bag. So you start off by laying your square of muslin on a flat surface. Then you add two dessert spoons of rolled oats to the middle of your muslin. You add a quarter of a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda to the top of your rolled oats. And then you add two to four drops of essential oil to the bicarbonate of soda. Add three quarters of a dessert spoon of your chosen herb to the rolled oats and the bicarbonate of soda combination and then you pick up your muslin square by bringing each of the corners of the muslin towards the centre. Twist your muslin bag and tie the top with your twine to keep the ingredients securely in your bath bag. Now to use your bath bag you simply add it to a hot bath. Oh it's such a treat, you're going to love it. Now for those of you who enjoy a Christmas tipple, nothing beats a herb infused brandy. The recipes make around 1 litre, so source some pretty 500ml bottles to decant your brandy into. Both brandies taste fabulous when they're topped with bubbles on Christmas day. So why have I chosen rose infused brandy and hawthorn brandy? Well it's because the roses will be just starting to bloom in the southern hemisphere and the hawthorn berries will be ready to pick in the northern hemisphere. Now both of these recipes use 700 mils of brandy. Hawthorn brandy, like your Dampson or slow infused gins, takes three months to infuse. It's because they're a heavy, dense berry. But if you pick your haws now and put them in the freezer, making hawthorn brandy is a fun thing to do with the kids between Christmas and New Year, and it will be ready to enjoy at Easter. Okay. So to make hawthorn brandy, you'll need one and a half litre kiln or jar, 500 grams of hawthorn berries and 225 grams of white sugar. And of course that's 700 mils of brandy. Here's how we do it. You want to begin by selecting your hawthorn berries. These are referred to as the haws and remove anything that's non-berry. This is things like leaves, twigs and stones. Give the haws a good wash and bash them up a bit with a rolling pin. Then you layer the haws into a large sterilised kiln or jar. Add one layer of haws and then one layer of sugar and you repeat this until you reach the top of the jar. Make sure that you leave some space at the top so that you 
can ensure that your hawthorns are covered by the brandy. Then you add the brandy. You want to do this slowly, giving the jar a good shake until the sugar has dissolved. Keep shaking it until you can't see the sugar anymore. Now I find it can take a couple of days of random shaking throughout the day to completely dissolve the sugar. So don't worry if you don't dissolve all of the sugar on the first go. And then you leave your mixture to develop over three months. You shake it every other day or when you remember. The colour will seep from the berries and into the brandy. After three months, you decant it into a bottle by passing it through a cheesecloth or a clean tea towel will do. And this makes sure that all the sediment is, a, is removed from your hawthorn brandy. Now traditionally, hawthorn brandy is enjoyed as a sherry glass full sipped before the fire each evening. But as I said, it's lovely topped up with bubbles. Now, if you're making rose petal brandy, You'll need that 1.5 litre kiln jar and a chopstick for squishing the rose petals into the brandy. You'll also need 240 grams of fresh rose petals, your 700 mils of brandy and 3 tablespoons of honey. First of all, you want to combine the brandy and the honey. Do this by shaking it around in the kiln or jar. Then place the rose petals in the large sealable jar and cover the rose petals with the honey and the branding mixture. This is where the chopstick comes in because you can mush it around and swish it and make sure that those petals go under the brandy because they like to float on top. You want to vigorously stir those rose petals with that chopstick to break them up. Make sure they're completely saturated with the brandy. And when you've finished this step, the rose petals should be completely submerged. Then you store it in a dark cupboard for a minimum of three weeks. At the end of that time, you strain it and you bottle it. And it's utterly delicious. I also like to, mine, I also like to make mine with just a touch of vanilla essence. And it's such a treat, especially topped up with those bubbles. I know, a bit of a theme emerging here. So if you start making your rose petal brandy now, it'll be ready for Christmas. I think the best medicine is the one you make yourself. And in my book, nothing beats receiving a present that's been made with love and is filled with heartfelt intention. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, Could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.